Hey everybody and welcome back to Travis's Musings episode 3. Uh, as you can see we've already got a couple of major changes this week, uh, namely being I got myself a new webcam so the video quality should increase pretty dramatically uh, from here on out and in addition to that this will also be my first official video uh, associated uh, with the TSP Calc uh, YouTube channel. So if you were a subscriber by before or you are planning on being a new subscriber, make sure you hit that subscribe uh, button on the bottom so you can subscribe to the TSP Calc YouTube channel. That way you're not going to miss any of mine or Matt's future videos. Um, this week we're going to be talking about uh, two different uh, items that are pretty, uh, they get asked about a lot. Uh, number one is we're going to go over some basic functions on the TSP Calc website and hopefully we can uh, have a resource where we can direct some people to quickly where they can kind of see a basic rundown of how to do stuff. And then as they get more comfortable um, utilizing the basic features, they can go ahead and start doing some of the more advanced uh, filtering and searching, et cetera. Um, the second thing that we're gonna talk about is I have promised a video for a couple weeks now discussing how to properly calculate your year-to-date gain percentage and why you have to utilize the compounding interest formula as opposed to the quick and dirty uh, gains divided by year start, et cetera. So um, let's go ahead and jump right in and we'll go ahead and take a look at tspcalc.com. <clears throat> okay, so here we are at tspcalc.com and as you can see here, We've got a variety of things. I'm logged in under uh, a premium account here, so you can go ahead and uh, take a look at some of the premium features while we're on. Um, everything you see on the screen here now is a uh, feature that is free to the public. So here in the left block is what we have as the bread and butter of the uh, TSP Calc, in my opinion. It's the seasonal calculator. This is the most basic tool and function that, uh, that people use, and this is how they create their own strategies. Uh, you've got three different columns here, which represent the three different IFTs uh, that were allowed a month were allowed a third if you go to the G fund only. And already loaded here, I have 57,171, but let me show you how I went ahead and loaded that. So down here on the go to strategy block, you can enter a strategy 57,171. So if you were uh, on the Facebook group and you saw somebody referring to a strategy number, you can go ahead and enter it here. And you can go ahead and hit go and it's gonna go ahead and auto-populate that strategy into the calculator. Now, a question that I also see occasionally is people say, I, I see these numbers referenced, what do these numbers mean? And what the numbers are is nothing more than a chronological number of a unique strategy created on TSP Cal. So, on the right here on the <clears throat> all-time list, you can see 81333. This was the 81st, 333rd strategy, unique strategy created with TSP Cal. And so, that's how they get their assigned numbers and, and what exactly they mean. So it's there's no magic behind it. It's, it's literally just a chronological number. So um, as we scroll down here, uh, let me take a look. This is also an important section here. I talked about one of my previous videos um, where you I went ahead and benchmarked some strategies. But you can go ahead and utilize a type of strategy there. Put a comma, so 27, 241. Or you can also add them directly off your watch list here. So 81,877, we can put that one in there too. So, so you can see here I've got three strategies there. 57,171 is already loaded. Go ahead and hit submit. And, oops. Just a little here. There we go. So this is our results tab. Now, uh, here I've got 57171 loaded, and it has its uh, historical data back to 2004, which is what we have on uh, provide on TSP Calc. And you also have the other three benchmarks that we added. And now you can go ahead and click through these. And as you click each tab, it brings it up here to the forefront with that same data. Now, again, now the this is kind of cool. This is a comparative chart, so if you want to uh, add some of the the index funds benchmarks, you can kind of see how your particular strategy did uh, long term and where that would have put you today. And of course, the infamous uh, trading calendar. 
Um, so this is uh, one more thing I wanted to touch on for now. This is a like I said, this is actually a premium service uh, item here. Um, the trading calendars you can you can see here. Uh, I'm sorry, my print link's not working here. So oh no, it is. Okay, so if you use the print link in the upper right hand corner, it will go ahead and uh, bring up the printable version of your calendar. Just kind of cool. So I'll click on it. So again, you can see that here on the print. And it's also for 2019 and 2020. So this is 2019 calendar. And so let's take a look at uh, February. So February has an a IFT date, which is what is highlighted here in white. And when it's highlighted in white, what it's meaning is that you need to trade that day on Tuesday the 19th before 12 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. So you have to submit your IFT before then uh, for it to go into effect at close of business that day. And something to keep in mind is is that the I I usually set uh, do my trading on uh, after 12 o'clock Eastern Standard Time the day before you have like a 24 hour window where you can go ahead and make your IFT etc so um, I've heard some people that were confused on when what when it shows this trading day what does that mean when are you actually supposed to do your trade if you do it after nine o'clock Eastern Standard Time uh, or uh, excuse me, 12 o'clock Eastern Standard Time nine o'clock Pacific time where I live uh, it will not process until the afternoon of the 20th, close of business on the 20th here. So, um, One more thing that I wanted to note here on the results tab is, so we're here on 57.171. You can see that here. This is where you can add it to your watch list. So at this point, then mine's already added, but you could click add to watch list and it would, it would automatically generate 57.171 onto the watch list. You can do that with any strategy, and as far as I know, there is no limit on the number of strategies that you can have added to your watch list at this time. Now, we will go ahead and uh, we'll show you one important feature here. So at the top, you'll click on my account, and you have your watch list illuminated here on the left. So I have a variety of uh, strategies that I'm watching, including my leader for 2020, 85, 425, which uh, I plan on talking about in depth in my end of December, end of year uh, 2020 evaluation uh, video. So, but what I wanted to point out here was these two columns associated with the strategies. You must have either SMS, which is your text, or your email alert box checked. If you don't have those checked, you will not receive a alert on your text, uh, on your cell phone, or in your email. And again, you also need to make sure that you have uh, your correct phone number and correct email uh, on the right, and having those verification emails and texts completed. So, um, so yeah, and then we'll go back to the calculator page, and this kind of wraps up some of the basic functions. <clears throat> um, as you probably noticed, I did not touch on the uh, seasonal strategies filter here. And I did that uh, purposely because it's, it's kind of a complex uh, topic. It could use its own video uh, discussing some of this stuff here. So um, the next thing we're going to do is now we're going to go in and swap over to Excel. And I'm going to kind of talk about some of the uh, compounding, con or, excuse me, compounding interest formulas and why they're important. OK, so here we have the Excel spreadsheet uh, that I created to explain compounding interest. And so you can see at the top of the screen here um, that I've given us a 1% gain for every month all the way through the end of the year. And logically speaking, you may say to yourself, okay, well, you, you return 12% on the year, but you would be wrong. The actual uh, number that you would have increased your account by was 12.68%, and that's by utilizing the compounding interest formula. And I'm going to show you how that works. So the formula is simply um, the percentage of the month. So 1% is actually 0 0.01. And you can see I've actually got the formula right here in this top bar. I click the, click the end there. And it's the product of um, the percent for that month plus 1 multiplied by your entire string. So uh, because it's 1% it's across the board, it's 1.01 12 times and then minus 1. And that number is going to be 0 0.128 or 1, uh, 0.1268, which is 12.68%, which is what you see here at the end. And that's most easily explained um, 
by taking a look here at uh, the starting balance and, and watching how this grows because what you actually get is you get interest on your interest as well which is why it's, it's uh, compounding interest um, so in January you made 1% on $10,000 and so you end up with a, a hundred extra dollars so at the end of <coughs> excuse me at the end of January you have ten thousand one hundred dollars but in February even though you make that same one percent um, you're only you're not making a hundred dollars you're making a hundred and one because you're also making one percent on that on that hundred and in March you're making a hundred and two and then in April you're making a hundred and three and so on and so on um, so if you didn't have any contributions and you are a retired uh, Fed and you're just sitting here on growth, you can do the easy method the whole year, which is your year-to-date gains divided by your beginning balance. And so you can you can see here that the uh, the ending balance. I've got some macros set up here. And I'll, I'll kind of explain those some more in a second. But the, your ending gains for the year is twelve thousand or one thousand two hundred sixty-eight point and twenty-five cents, which is twelve point six eight percent. Uh, when divided by 10,000. But what we're missing, of course, is contributions, which is uh, more common for, for everyone. And I think how we kind of get some skewed numbers sometimes. So it's important, like I said, to, to utilize the correct um, compounding interest formula because it, when we're trying to actually talk about strategies and be realistic about our returns, we, we want to we want as as accurate as possible, and accuracy is only really achieved when when you utilize the compounding interest on a monthly basis. Yes, there will be some error, um, which I'll kind of show later, but it's it's very minor and it really doesn't change your end number a whole lot, maybe a few hundreds. So, um, so you can see here we added six hundred dollars a month in. Uh, contributions to our account <clears throat> and now we have one thousand six hundred and seventy seven dollars and seventy five cents uh, gained for the year now if you divide that by ten thousand you would come up with sixteen point seven seven percent which is pretty dramatic uh, I mean that's a that's a four percent or a thirty percent higher number than your actual year-to-date contributions which is what you're going to want to use so but um, of course the higher your balance the less these numbers actually affect. So staying with $600 uh, a month contribution, let's go ahead and change the starting number here to 100,000. And let's take a look at our gains. So um, we gained $13,092 with a 12.68% uh, year. But if you do the easy method, that would come up to be 13.1% if you take 13,092 divided by 100,000. So, <clears throat> and then it gets even more dramatic if you do something like up your contributions to $1,200. So this is uh, about uh, 14 grand a year, which is still under max, but we're getting close. So 14,400, so it actually goes to 13.5% which is uh, 13,501 divided by your starting balance for the year, which is 100,000. Uh, 100, so, so the way that I get my monthly number is I go to tsp.gov and I go to activity summary and I do the, the quote unquote easy method on a monthly basis. So I take the whole month of January, I set my dates accordingly and I do my gains divided by my beginning balance. And that minimizes my error when I'm doing my calculations and, and gives me a more accurate number. And like I said, uh, by year end, even when I had a much smaller balance, my PIP was usually within like three or four hundredths of, of the, uh, the actual number. And so um, it, it's, it's pretty accurate when you do it on a monthly basis. So, <coughs> excuse me. And uh, let's go ahead and we're going to change this to... Um, 500,000 and you can see here uh, we made uh, with 12.68 percent year we made 64,231 and let's see what that comes out at so we take 64,231 and 52 cents divided by 500,000 12.84 percent so now we're starting to get pretty close um, it's still a little high 
um, but we're getting uh, significantly closer to, to an accurate number. But um, these are just some some examples to kind of show uh, when when we're talking about your your gains. This is this is how you get the most accurate. Is you do it on a monthly basis, and you don't worry so much about the year number, other than for tracking purposes. Um, it's about the compounding interest uh, utilizing that formula. So, and the Jaren has a full spreadsheet on the TSB Seasonal Strategies Facebook group. Um, he has it's got macros for year to, year to date and all that, and and so you can utilize that to track your own TSP. In addition, um, I'm actually going to probably upload um, this for a quick and dirty for somebody if somebody wants to look at a one year uh, balance number. And I also did some modifications to Jaren's uh, spreadsheet in order to show a variety of other things that I can I can upload as well. Hey guys, that's all I've got for today. Thank you so much for watching. And remember that I do this is a new YouTube channel for me, so make sure you uh, click the subscribe button below so you do not miss out on any of my future videos. So. Um, my next video is going to be planned for the end of December. I'm going to try to do it before the New Year's so that uh, we can talk about some of the 2020 strategies and which strategy I'm going to be using to beat Jaren, which is really everybody's goal every year. And uh, I'm also going to be doing some discussion on the validity of some uh, less flashier strategies, um, but that hold quite a bit of promise for those of you that may want to dip your toes in seasonality. but aren't quite sure if you want to uh, run with the emotional risks associated with uh, being out of the market or in the market and losing, et cetera. So anyways, thanks for stopping by guys.